Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And to those that subscribe, view, respond, and comment. Thank you very much. It's so greatly appreciated to know that people even take time out to view this Home Bible Study video. Today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, the beast of Revelation chapter 13 may already be here. Now, this is a video that I didn't plan on doing, except I've been observing what's been going on in this world, uh, especially over the last two weeks uh, with the conflicts that's going on in the Middle East, with what's going on in our country, what's going on with the major superpowers around the world, and all the events. And I always look at it from God's perspective. And I heard something today that the bulb went off so bright that I was almost blinded by it. I'm meaning that metaphorically, of course. But it was such an intense thing that I observed that I had to make this video to respond. Now, we're going to look at this video, interestingly enough, totally from God's perspective. Normally we do a Bible study from, and we look at it from man's perspective and God's perspective. Well, it's too late for man's perspective at this point. So we're going to look at it from God's perspective. We're going to leave mankind's two cents out of this because mankind will always look at everything from the natural side of the flesh of the world. And if we do that, we'll miss everything that is being presented as to what this video is going to show you from God's perspective as to what is happening in the world today. Take heed, ladies and gentlemen, this is a warning. I have never in the 20 years now that I've been studying scripture ever put a date or a time on any type of event. I've always talked about prophecy that has been fulfilled in the past, which is very normal to do and truthful. But with prophecy that is going to happen in the future, you leave alone as far as dates and times. You look at the signs, and the signs are all around us, and we're given signs so we can know the signs. We just can't put a date and a time to them. But the signs are all here, especially from what I have observed and heard this very evening today, what prompt me to make this video for you. Now, it's interesting because the title is, of course, again, Dealing with the Beast. Now, let's make it very clear here. I have done videos in the past about the beast in the book of Revelation. Now, we're not talking about an antichrist here, ladies and gentlemen. The beast is not an antichrist. If you believe so, then you do not have a full understanding of God's word from God's perspective in Scripture. But be that as it may, the beast we're talking about here is a very interesting character because a lot of things are prophesied in Scripture one time, maybe two times. You know what? They always tell you if it's mentioned at least two times, there's quite an emphasis one should take on this. Well, it's very interesting when you talk about the beast of the book of Revelation. He's mentioned four times. He's prophesied at least a minimum of four times in Scripture. Now, I want to let that soak in just for a few moments here. This beast has been prophesied throughout the history of the Bible and God dealing with mankind from the conception up until the end. He is mentioned, prophesied about four times, way back. And it starts in the first place, and we're not going to read every one, but I'm going to read the last two. But he is prophesied in the book of Daniel, of all places, in chapter 9. But I think it's imperative, maybe, that I do show you the prophecy of the beast in the book of Daniel, in chapter 9. And it says, and, and what it'll show, and we're just going to read verse 27. In the book of Daniel, chapter twenty, uh, chapter nine, verse twenty-seven of the book of Daniel, considering concerning the beast that is being prophesied about. In verse twenty-seven, this is what it says: "And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week." We know here in the scripture, the one week is seven years. We know that. And in the midst of the week, so after three and a half years of his ruling, shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate, even until the consumption and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. In other words, the great tribulation. 
the seven years, there's seven years, but he, the first three and a half years of this beast rule is very good. And that, that's what brings us into this, in, this study from God's perspective, what makes it so interesting when you look at things in the world today. I have never been so fired up to do a video since I can remember, ladies and gentlemen, than I am about this one. Again, in this video, I am going to mention the coming of the beast that I believe is already here. There's no name going to be given. It's not going to be, I'm not going to mention the origin from where this beast comes from. You can decipher all that. You can look things up and make up your own minds because I'm not going to tell you what it is you should believe by what I present, by what I present from Scripture. You can believe that or not. But from what I hear now and what I'm seeing, I'm totally convinced it's very close to being come to fruition of the beast taking control of things. Now, we know that he was prophesied in the book of Daniel. I just read about it. And Jesus Christ even talked about him in uh, when he talked to his disciples or his 12 apostles. He told them, when, when they asked him about the signs to come, and he tells about this, you know, and then he says uh, about, he tells them about the signs of the end times. He calls it the end times. And then we notice that when we talk about when Paul said and prophesied about the beast, we talked about the latter days. And we've done both studies on which what they are. So if you want to know what they are, you can look them up from my previous videos. But here in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the apostles came to Jesus and they asked him personally, what's going to happen at the end times? When are we going to know the end of the world has come? And I'm not going to read all the verses on here, but you start in verse 4. And then the first thing he says in verse 4 of Matthew chapter 24, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, he didn't say, make sure that no God deceived you. He didn't, he, he didn't say, make sure Satan doesn't deceive you. It's interesting because people, a lot of times, will say it's all of Satan's doings. Well, you have to remember, Satan is a spirit being. You can't see Satan. He can take the form of other things. But what did Jesus specifically say when I said, read scripture, you read it carefully and slowly, and look at what it says and what it doesn't say. It says, Jesus told them, take heed warning that no man deceive you. He said, no man. He didn't say Satan. He didn't say an angelic being. He didn't say a spiritual being or even a God with a small g. He said man. So important. Keep that up here as we go through this study. Man. So with that being said, he goes on to tell them the things that are going to happen and <laughs> we can look at these and we know a lot of these are all happening, but I'm not going to bore you with them although scripture to me is never boring. But he says something very interesting in uh, verse 15. And this is what he told his 12 apostles. He said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, chapter 9 of Daniel, that the prophet stand in the holy place, and in parentheses it says, Whoso read this, readeth, let him understand. And he goes on to talk about what people are going to be doing. Now, pay, let me. You, you should really listen to or you should really read the scripture because it falls exactly into what is coming, not as what's happening today. It is so close, so it will be happening shortly. And he says, um, in verse 16, he says, And let them which will be in Judea, which is Israel, flee into the mountains, and so forth. And you can read the rest of that. Now that's number two that he's been prophesied about, this beast, in the book of Revelation. And then let's go to the book of Thessalonians. Actually, let's go all the way to the second Thessalonians in your Bible, which is one of the 13 books that Paul wrote. Now this is very interesting because I hear a lot of times about people that don't believe Paul should have writings in the scripture that Paul is a false apostle, that Paul is a anti Christ. Again, I'm not going to get into that. That could be a separate video, which I have done on Paul. But the thing is, he is not an antichrist because if people call Paul an antichrist, they do not know or understand what an antichrist is from God's perspective, only from man's perspective. But anyway, he says something very, very important in his 
uh, prophecy, if you will, that it was given to him from Jesus Christ. And we talk about it, and we've pre presented this before in previous videos. I apologize if I'm trying to talk fast or get excited, because I'm really, really excited about this video, ladies and gentlemen. I really am, because I've been looking forward for the return or the rapture of Jesus Christ in the end times for the last 20 years. Now, here's what it's, he's telling Again, Paul is telling us through Jesus Christ's words now. Okay, not through Paul's words, but through his, uh, Jesus Christ's words. This is what Paul says, starting in verse 3 of chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. What does he say? He said, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, where did you hear that before? And who did you hear that before from? You heard it from Jesus Christ when he personally was on this earth in the flesh, talking to his 12 disciples. What does he do when he appears to Paul in the spirit and gives him the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ himself? And what does he tell Paul to tell you and me? Let no man deceive you by any means. Man again. Remember I said keep that thought in your head? You're going to know why in a little while. For that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4, who upholds and exalted himself above all that is called God, and that it is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And excuse me, this will all play out in this video as we look at it from God's perspective. Excuse me, and then Paul says, in verse 5, remember ye not that when I was with you in his prior visits, he said, I told you these things. And now verse 6, he says, now ye know that withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity, the son of perdition, does already work. Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He's talking about the Holy Spirit here. is the only one keeping this beast from appearing at bay. And then verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Look at verse 9, Even him, now he's talking about the beast, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So this is again prophesied about this beast. And let's continue on in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to look at what the beast is. And uh, it's very interesting when you read it here, because I'm going to read you uh, probably several verses. I'll start in verse 1 of chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. And again, this is Jesus Christ giving a revelation to John the Apostle from a spiritual revelation about the physicality of Jesus Christ when he's revealed in his second coming. And yet it's funny because as a footnote, people will want to disclaim Paul the, as an apostle. They call him a false apostle, false teacher, an antichrist. He was given a spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ, and so was John. Yet John's is totally accepted in the realm of Christianity where Paul's isn't. Isn't that ironic? But anyway, that's just a little side note. Chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven horns and ten, seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name blasphemy. And verse 2, And the beast which I saw <clears throat> was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, and he, and his seat with great authority. Now I want to mention that. Keep that also in your mind. This beast is given great authority by Satan. Great authority. Don't forget that. And verse 3, And I saw one of his heads, as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. It was healed. He had, a, he had a mortal wound to his head, but it was miraculously healed. So the whole world, the whole world, all of the world wondered after the beast. Not just one country, the whole world. And verse 4, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Very important. Understand that verse. 
Who is able to make war with him? And verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. Three and a half years. Now, that's the fourth time this beast is uh, revealed in Scripture through prophecy. Where are we at with all this? Now let's look at it from God's perspective in this world, shall we? What's happening, per se, today, not only in our country, and but in the Middle East? Just to give you a little, let's line this all up, shall we? You're having superpowers. You're having the uh, superpower of the East, China, Russia, the Middle East, Turkey, Iran. Israel, the United States, the European Union, and you're even looking at Japan making alliances with Australia and France. That's at least seven. Powers of the world are joining forces within their own little families now. Not everybody's coming together as one. Don't get that confused. But they're all except for the United States at this moment, are flexing their muscles. They're kind of trying to show some kind of aggression to show that they are not someone to be not reckoned with. And you can also throw in Great Britain into this equation because they have now separated from the uh, European Union. And then you have all these powers becoming very aggressive and wanting to go out and dominate areas and grow in not only territory, but in world dominance of one way or the other. And they're seeing these things happening and they're going with the gathering their intelligence. And even the United States with all the turmoil that's inside this country going on right now, where the government that's here is trying to destroy this country within. And there may be a great reason as to why that is also happening when you look all of this from God's perspective. With that all happening, there is right now, as we speak, a major war developing within Israel and the Palestinians or the Arab Hamas, Hezbollah, and all these terrorist organizations that are all of these terrorist organizations, to include the ones in Syria and Lebanon, they're all tied in with Iran, to include Iraq, Turkey. So all these countries are developing and planning and are now attacking Israel, their whole objective is to annihilate the Zionists, as they call them, the evil one of Israel. Wipe them off the earth. That's Iran's stance, and that's Turkey's stance, that's Hezbollah's stance, that's Hamas's stance, the Houthis out of Yemen. You name it, whatever area that's in the world, I know I'm talking about a lot of governmental things in this video, but you have to because it relates to what God is looking at from God's perspective. And you're seeing major destruction wherever you go. You're, <coughs> excuse me, seeing major destruction within our United States with the people rioting and the unrest and people starting to fight against one another. You find unrest in China. You find unrest in, in Russia. You find unrest in Iran. You find unrest in uh, Turkey, Syria, all these countries. Even now, Israel, the unrest in the streets of Israel, where towns are being actually locked down with the whole country in a state of emergency. And this could go on for a while, and it's going to go on for a while. Now, why bring all this into this video about the beast? Well, it's very important because here is what's going to happen within probably the next few days or even the next week. There is somebody. Now, I'm not going to mention a name. I'm not going to mention the country, but I am going to tell you the who, what, where, why, and what and what this person is going to represent. That's key in this video. Now, there's a person coming out of a country that's going to be sent to Israel, to the hotbed of where things are happening right now, the hotbed of prophecy, if you will, the Middle East. Specifically, this person may end up in Jerusalem is where I think he's going to end up. But anyway, this person has chosen by a formidable country, a very powerful country, a very wealthy country, 
uh, a superpower country, if you will, in the world, recognized around the world as being a very diplomatic player within the confines of the world as far as governmental systems go. This country is sending a representative to the Middle East. Now, this person has a very, very impressive resume. He has dealt through all his so-called fleshly career to solve major problems, conflicts. He has extensive, extensive uh, experience dealing with major conflicts that involve civilizations, but he has a unique way of approaching them. He leaves the powers to be out of the equation. He leaves the military powers out of the equation. He goes to the individual level of the people. Then he goes from there on upward. He doesn't look at it. You look at the countries, you look at all the embassies, you look at the United Nations, you look at all the uh, people that are ambassadors for the country. It's always talking about the major things of the government. The people are the last things ever mentioned or ever co they're concerned about because they figure it'll be a what they call, it'll trickle down to the people eventually, but we're going to start at the top and work down. This individual has spent his whole career and making out his resume that he works from the bottom up. Totally opposite of what normally is done in any diplomatic relationship between countries, governments, societies, when you think about it. So this individual is becoming, that's going to be sent from this country is highly esteemed from the country that he is being sent from on all sides of governmental institutions within that country. So there's no divisions as to far as arguing that this is not probably the, the best person we have to send over to the Middle East to do this. So this is this man's very impressive resume from a fleshly standpoint, from mankind. They're going to send him shortly over there. Now he's being sent to what? A very hot spot. He could very well, when he gets there, can be mortally wounded by a rocket from Hezbollah, sniper fire, whatever's going on in Jerusalem. He could very easily become mortally wounded. Sent by this great country, this individual with all of these enormous credentials of peace. See, this person is noted for his peacekeeping abilities. Again, no name, no country. You can figure that out, and you will hear about this person in the news. He gets there. What if he does get mortally wounded? According to scripture, the beast is going to be mortally wounded and is going to miraculously survive his mortal wound. Now, to get excited about this from God's perspective is one thing because we know about the rapture that's going to come before this beast takes hold. We know it's going to take a while for this beast to get established and do his thing, but he's going to have the power of Satan. So I'm going to tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. The country that sends him is definitely under the influence of the power of Satan because the whole world is under the power and right now of Satan. I get such a kick out of these people that present videos that uh, present themselves as Christian and their videos are based on Christian values and whatever, and they always say God is in charge. God is not in charge on purpose. The deed belongs to Satan of this world because it's a sinful world. God doesn't want anything to do with a sinful world. Come on, people. Don't you read scripture? This is going to be a new earth, new heavens. This is all going to be done away with. It has to be. It has to be destroyed. And God's going to let Satan do his thing because Satan has control of this earth, this world that we live in today. He has total control of it, and he's using it now, and it's building to a crescendo. So this beast, who's in the form of a man, who has such credentials, he'll be welcomed by all sides. See, he has the ability to deal with all sides because he goes to the lowest end and works up. And you have all these countries, whether it's uh, Israel, whether it's all the other <clears throat> Arab nations, to include Russia and China, 
All these countries, how many of these people that are in these countries are oppressed? The majority of people are oppressed in all these countries looking for something, aren't they? And they will welcome someone that can come in. And this person will have the charm to deal with the high-ranking individuals of the governments of these countries. He'll be so sly, he's so cunning, he's so crafty, he's so convincible, and he's so likable with what he's going to propose, they're all going to buy into it. Because right now, there is a much need for peace in the Middle East. The whole world recognizes this. They don't want this hot thing to continue. Although there is countries trying to eliminate Israel right now, it's not going to happen yet. Not according to God's word, see. This beast has come in first. It may look, and it does look right now, that Israel is on the brink of being destroyed because if, if Iran decides to invade along with what they're perceiving as the ring of fire that is around Israel today from the north, south, east, and west, rockets, thousands pointing at them, they could fire all these rockets at one time, overwhelm Israel's defense system, and destroy Israel. That's what they think they're planning on doing. But they're sending this person now that's coming to Israel. And remember I said power? In, in, and it was uh, prophesied that this man's going to have great power. This country that is sending this person now is giving this person power beyond anything anybody else has ever had, whether the person was a secretary of state, if the person was a high-ranking official, which is pretty close to almost, a, let's say, a president of a country would be the secretary of state. This person has power that is given above and beyond the Secretary of State even. It's not even an ambassador type of thing. He has going to have all kinds of power and leverage to do what it is he needs to do to get this problem resolved. Keep that in mind. And you will hear about the powers that this country that's sending this person to Israel is giving this individual. It's pretty impressive. So he gets there. And you have to remember about this uh, man, ladies and gentlemen, that was prophesied about and Jesus said it twice, take heed, let no man deceive you. So it's going to be a man that is going to deceive. Because you remember when I did a comparison about people that think that a, the beast is an antichrist, nothing could be further from the truth. He's going to come in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Because what did Jesus Christ always say on this earth? He came in peace. But he also said he came in as a, in, with a sword to divide. This one isn't going to do that. He's going to come totally representing what? Peace. He has the formula for it. He has the credentials. He's dealt with these kind of things in countries all over the world now. In all kinds of conflicts. So he has the experience, but he's going to have the power given to him by Satan this time fully. And it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. The beast is already here. And he's going to be being sent to Israel very shortly, because they can't allow this thing to go on the way it is. Because God won't permit it to. It's got to fall in the prophetic timeline of what God has set up. And prophecy has never failed since day one, way back in Genesis chapter 3. It has been 100% up until today. And it's going to be 100% until the end of times. You can take that to the bank. No matter what other countries and people say, you have to look at it, and we're looking at this solely from God's perspective, because mankind won't see any of this coming. The natural man, absolutely not, will accept this man 110%. To the fact that he will even bring calm to the Middle East. You will see a ceasefire shortly. They say that Hezbollah, or Hamas, this, this terror organization that's bombing Israel right now, has a supply to give thousands of rockets every day for 60 days. Will it last 60 days? It may and it may not. It may end before that. And I think it might. Depending on what happens when this person arrives in Israel. You know, and you've got to realize, when well, he's going to Israel, all the major airports are what? They're closed. They don't accept flights. How is he going to get to Israel? It'll be in a covert operation. You can bet your bottom dollar he'll get there in a secret mission. Nobody's going to know when he gets there. All of a sudden, he'll be there. You can't just go into a war, savage country and just go to an airport that's closed because of missile strikes. 
but he's going to get there. And once he lands and does start doing his thing, you will start to see. And again, like I said, he has to be wounded in order for, for this prophetic scripture to come about, this prophetic timeline, and for him to miraculously heal. Because the day he becomes wounded, it may look like it's the end of everything as far as what mankind sees. But then if he recovers, what's that going to do to solidify his statute with mankind in the flesh? It's going to seal the deal. Because remember we read in Revelation, the whole world wondered about this beast. The whole world. All the world. All is the whole world. All countries. Whether they're foreign, domestic, whether they're terrorists, whether they're arch enemies, or whether they're friends, they're all going to wander, including the country that sent them. And all the people that are of the natural man, of the natural flesh, are going to worship this man. And that's the way it's going to play out. And it has to, because that's when he is going to rise above. Everybody else has tried. All You look at, since the conception of Israel as a nation in 1948, how many peace deals have come and gone, come and gone. People are going to say, oh, here we go again. Same old, same old. That just never works. But this man's going to make it work, because he's not going at it the way everybody else goes at it, you see. That's key. Satan's smarter than that. He let man for so long go at it to where mankind gets so numb to the fact that <clears throat> it's not going to work, it's just another ploy to try another peace agreement that's going to fail. Then all of a sudden this man's doings are starting to work. Because you remember in his resume, this person has the ability to go down to the lower echelons and work his way up. He'll be accepted by the upper echelons right away. But they might even disagree at first of how he's going about it. But again, the, what's going to seal the deal is if he gets wounded and it's a mortal wound and he remarkably, miraculously survives it, comes out of it. Almost if he was risen from the dead, you might say. Because he is a deceiver. He is going to look and he's going to act. And eventually he will tell people he is Jesus Christ. Because what did Jesus Christ do after the cross? He was raised from the dead. Remember that. What's the beast going to do? The beast is going to receive a mortal wound to his head. What's going to happen to him? He's going to be raised literally from the dead. People will perceive this. And it's going to be very easy for the natural man who has rejected Jesus Christ throughout their lives to accept him as that. Because they say, well, maybe there's some truth to this. I didn't do the Jesus thing before, but maybe now i got to consider doing it. And he's going to bring peace. See, the peace is, it's going to be more than just a ceasefire. It's going to be a ceasefire that we've never seen before, where countries will lay down their arms. He will sit in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is not only considered the capital of Israel, but the Arab countries surrounding them want it to be the capital of the Arab world also. That's so important to understand. Not of the Arab countries, but of the Arab world. And Jerusalem wants that to be the capital of God's eternal city, of the world, see? So you have the world in this one little town in this one little country that affects the whole world because of whatever happens in Jerusalem affects the whole world. So if he is who they think he says he is and he deceives them, he's not an antichrist. As we explained before, antichrist is somebody that opposes Jesus Christ and he publicly says so. This man will never say that. This man will show all the signs of lying wonders and powers given by Satan to convince the people that he is who he says he was. He's going to tell them eventually he's Jesus Christ and he's going to sit down. They're going to have peace. The temple will be rebuilt and, that, and it's not going to affect the dome. The dome for the Israel or for the Arab world in the Islamic religious centers will remain also. But there's going to be a temple built beside it. And that's the whole plan of all this. And it's going to happen when this man is brought into Israel. And he's going to be brought into Israel, ladies and gentlemen, very, very soon. And it's going to be interesting to see what that happens when he does. Because I listen to the world's events through the eyes of Scripture, from God's perspective, from God's prophetic timelines. 
I don't know the date. I don't know the exact time, but I know it's very, very, very soon because of what is happening. You look at what Jesus Christ told his 12 apostles about the things in the end times. And then you read about the things Paul wrote about that was in the latter days while they both are happening so simultaneously. It's so easy to put all of those together and say, all the signs are here. All of them. And they've been around us for a couple of years now. And the latter days are not a latter years. It's not latter weeks. It's latter days. So when it's latter days, it's only a matter of a couple years. And these things have been happening for what? Four or five years now. It's not going to take a whole week of scripture. It's not going to take seven years for this to all happen. So here he comes. And he sits down. And ladies and gentlemen, you can believe this video or you're not. I challenge you to watch over the next couple of weeks. Get on uh, internet, get on social media, get on your television and look at what's happening, read what's happening, but don't leave the Bible too far out of the way. If you don't understand scripture, you will not have an idea of what I am talking about at all. That's the sadness about it. So many people, the majority of people in this world, of the 7 billion and plus that are in this world, will be deceived totally. And you talked about the dry runs. The mark of the beast is coming very, very soon. And so is the rapture of the body of Christ church, which gives me hope like I've never had before. In such great anticipation, it's going to be hard to sleep in the next week or so. But anyway, you can understand all this. You can have all this at your disposal. Excuse me, I'll deal here a little bit. And I think I screwed something up, but I think we're back now. Sorry about that. You can have an understanding of all this. You can see this with great anticipation, not with despair, as a lot of people, the majority of the people of this world are seeing this all as a despair, ladies and gentlemen. Agony, pain, disruption, death. It's horrible to people because they don't understand the big picture. They don't understand what's happening. It all has to happen for a reason beyond mankind's perception. Mankind cannot recognize this, nor can they understand it because it is of the spirit. We that are of the spirit totally understand this. We're totally comfortable with it. We know it's coming. We know it's been coming for a long time, and we're excited about it. As crazy as that may sound to you that view this video from the natural man. You can have this spiritual insight. You can be saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ and get you out of all this mess. You won't even have to experience none of that stuff that's coming down the pike. If you want to, you can discard this video. You can refuse the finished work of the cross. You can refuse the grace of God in this, in this dispensation of the grace of God and refuse the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you that is found in Romans 2, Philemon, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that Paul was given to give to you and me today for our sinful souls and our dead spirit to be made alive in Christ Jesus. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And you believe that by faith and faith alone. It is by faith through grace that you're saved. It's a gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ladies and gentlemen, the end times and the latter days are here. And someone is coming that's already on this earth that will be exposing himself very, very shortly. The one that's been prophesied about at least four times that I showed you in Scripture called the beast of the book of Revelation. Coming with all power, signs, and lying wonders that have been given to him by the power of Satan to deceive. And we were warned by Jesus Christ twice, take heed, let no man deceive you. He's going to be a man. And the saddest thing is, for those of you that are lost, he will deceive you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study. 
from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you. Hey, you got a comment? I'd love to hear about it. Maybe you have some ideas. Maybe you have some thoughts of your own. Especially if it's from God's perspective. We'd love to hear from you. This is Robert Holler thanking you. And always remember, until next time.